G'day, Jeff Lewis here from Seriously Series. I've just finished a big adventure in the Series 2 and I'm actually just conducting a bit of a service on the Series 2 today. And it's been requested by a number of viewers on our channel, both here on YouTube and on Instagram, uh, whether I can actually do a video showing you what I do in a service, some of the, tr some of the tricks, some of the tips, that I've learned over the years. And the service that I do, particularly on the series Land Rovers, is very, very different to what you actually find in your workshop manual. And this is because I've picked up a number of little, um, I guess, not flaws, but little issues that come out with the Land Rover over the 3,000 miles or the 5,000 Ks uh, in between each service interval. So anyway, stay tuned as I show you some tips and tricks how to get a bit more out of your series Land Rover and also how to do a good thorough service on your vehicle. Rightio, so if you don't own a series Land Rover you might not know this, but whether you have a petrol or a diesel, you need to service the vehicle every 3,000 miles or 5,000 k's. And basically what this entails is a very, very simple service. Basically changing the engine oil, um, going round obviously, tightening up any bolts or nuts that have come loose over that duration of that period and basically that's it uh, however for me I like to do things a little bit more thorough because I'm traveling to some very remote parts of the world so what we're going to look at here today is obviously one how to do an oil change in a series Land Rover and that might sound really simple but when I first bought this vehicle I had no idea how to do that so we're going to cover that I'm going to show you also how to do your ignition timing or sorry change your points in a series Land Rover because basically I do that every pretty much every 12 months um, I'm not doing huge amounts of miles in the series 2 um, and the series 3 but if you just do it routinely then you seldom have problems and it's the same with the services so I do every 5,000 kilometers because I'm here in Australia or I do every 6,000 not 6,000 every six months sorry getting stuck in the thousands there every six months and I change the oil and I go over the whole vehicle and I do that pretty much for all my vehicles so we'll do that we're also going to d uh, drain the oil out of the the transmission the transfer case, the front and the rear differential and we're also going to check the swivel hub housings which is really important to do if you're driving on corrugated conditions. Um, it still pays to check your swivel hub housings even if you are driving on bitumen and I will get to why that is the case later on in the video. Um, we also will do a coolant change in this video too. Um, I might have to break it up into two parts, but we're going to go in depth. We're going to do a proper job of this video. And look, if you have any questions as we go through this video, stop it, put a comment down below, and I'll do my best to answer it. And if I can't answer it, then Damon will jump in and he'll give his two cents worth. Okay, so let's get stuck in. Let's do the oil change, and we'll move on from there. Rightio, so the oil filter in your series Land Rover, and it doesn't matter what series Land Rover you have, whether it has the diesel, yeah, whether it has the 1.6 litre, the 2 litre petrol, the 2 litre diesel, the 2 and a quarter litre petrol or diesel, or the 2.6 litre, they all use a cartridge oil filter. Now this one's a Brit part, and some people put a S in front of Brit part. That's fine. I've used these for the past eight years. The vehicle's running fine. So this is the cartridge, as you can see here. Pretty simple. Paper on the outside, cardboard on the inside. 
Now I've already gone underneath the car and I've taken the actual holder or the actual cup for the filter and basically I get this and I pop it straight in there and then I'll screw it onto the motor. But before we do that, one of the things that you'll get, or you should get, and I didn't get, <laughs> that's one of the problems with these filters, is you actually get a rubber o-ring and this actually goes around the housing that's actually bolted onto the actual motor itself. Now you can change these every 5,000 k's, every 3,000 miles, but they're an absolute pain in the you know what to actually get in there and to actually get them flat so you'll get a nice seal. Um, yeah they are a real pain so I do them every 12 months I change them routinely then um, after six months they're not going to perish and there shouldn't be any nicks in it anyway. But anyway, uh, we'll hop underneath and we'll get this all bolted up and then we'll put some oil in the actual motor and I'll talk about what viscosities you should be looking at using in your actual series uh, engine and a few tips and tricks how you can actually clean it up every now and then without using any of those new Fandango uh, engine cleaning additives and all the rest because you really don't want to be using them. Okay, so not the best camera work I understand, but that's the actual cartridge in place. Now one of the best tools that you can get is a ratchet spanner which you can put onto here and you can slowly tighten it up. It's much much quicker than using a uh, standard spanner and it's much easier to get in there than using a ratchet. Once you get it to this stage, and as you can see it's moving, you then want to get it so it's absolutely central. If you let it hang down, then you're going to get oil coming out the bottom. If you push it up too high, you're going to get oil spouting out the top. You can get a kit to actually remove all of this and put a screw on filter, but we're, pu we're purists here at Seriously Series, so we like to do things right. So that's why I persevere with these. And they're not that bad. They'll take an adjust. I'll have to adjust it maybe once or twice, but uh, after that, it works fine. So that's the key little trick to uh, to get that to seal properly. Okay, so we've got the oil filter in place, and you want to make sure that's done up nice and firm to create a good seal around it. Now, I've got the sump plug here. And this is a little trick I learnt off a friend of mine. You obviously want to make sure that you're using a copper washer and you actually put that on and the copper, when you actually tighten it up, binds in, creates a seal. But sometimes, even with that, you can get a little bit of a leak. So Teflon tape, which typically you use for your hot and cold uh, brass fittings for your water system inside your house, works really, really well and you just go around that probably once or twice and that binds in to the thread like so as you can see there and that actually stops the oil actually getting into the thread and then obviously weeping out the other side so it means your Land Rover isn't going to be sweating too much power and therefore not costing you too much money in additional oil between services. Rightio, so as you can see here the oil is pretty black, looks pretty horrible and particularly with these older motors, it doesn't matter what vehicle you have, one of the reasons why you have to do your oil changes so routinely is due to tolerance and pressure. Now this Land Rover has a 7 to 1 compression ratio which was typical of the early two and a quarter litre petrol engines. Later on in the 2A they moved to an 8 to 1 compression ratio and after 1980 in the Series 3 they moved to a 9 to 1 compression ratio. So this means that basically, in very very simple terms, the fuel and the air is getting compressed a heck of a lot more before it's going to be ignited. Now what does this mean? Well, if you compress the fuel a lot more and you get a much more efficient burn, 
at a higher temperature, then that ensures that you're not going to get as much soot. And it is soot that typically causes this to go black. It's not that entirely the only reason why your oil goes black, but it's certainly one of the primary reasons behind it. Now, there's a couple things you can do to actually keep your motor nice and clean. Now, something that I've done in the past, on and off, is I've put, just for a very short run, not a very long run, just a short run, thousand kilometers, no more than that, I've actually put diesel oil inside the Series 2 here. Now, diesel oil differs considerably to that compared to what you would put in a petrol or a gasoline engine. Diesels tend to be, as engines go, a lot more dirtier. And basically, they have a lot more detergent actually in the oil. They've got to soak up a lot more gunk and all the rest. So if you do that, it actually helps to clean out the motor a little bit. There's another little top tip that Shell recommended to do back in the 1960s. Now, I haven't tried this, so if you're posed at the keyboard and ready to type a comment, just, just wait and hear me out. I'm not condoning this, I'm just suggesting this. They suggested that you drain half the oil out of your engine and then you run it for 10 minutes. Now, with less oil, this would actually cause all the grime and all the rest to get pumped around the motor and scraped off and whatever and then you could actually drop it out the bottom. Now why am I telling you all this? Well it's very very simple. You can go and get one of these engine cleaning kits or whatever they call and you put your potion into the motor and you let it go. In my mind it's probably one of the worst things you could possibly do to the engine particularly on these older motors because what actually happens is the imperfections in the cylinder, if you imagine like a round cylinder itself, it's going to have cuts and imperfections and pits and all the rest. What happens over time, like the plaque on your teeth, is this actually gets smoothed over. And this is due to oil and obviously fuel too, just becoming really encrusted on the side of that actual cylinder and basically it takes up the imperfections and the you know obviously the tolerance or the little gaps that are there and actually helps the motor run much much better so it's well worthwhile being just very careful of the products that you actually put in your motor so that's my top tip uh, in regards to oil and obviously cleaning your engine be careful read up on it do your research and think about it Anyway, let's go get some engine oil. Let's put 6.5 litres of engine oil into the motor. And I'll show you another top tip before we actually start it up and actually hit the road. Rightio. So, motor oil. Now, motor oil is one of those funny subjects. Everyone has an opinion on what brand they want to use, what viscosity, and all the rest. So... All I'm going to do here is put my two cents in. You decide what you want to do. It's up to you, right? I've made that very clear. It is up to you, right? What I've been using for the past four years is Castrol. I've been using Castrol 2050. Um, the reason why I use 2050, um, it works really well in the two and a quarter litre petrol engines. Uh, they don't burn a lot of oil. Um, I can also use it in my LT95 gearbox, which I do. Um, I use that in the Parenti, and I'll use that in the Stage 1 when I get that up and running and working. Um, just a really versatile oil. Um, Castrol's really the only oil I can get here in the WA Outback, you could say, here in Kalgoorlie. Um, and I can get it at a fair price. Um, I think I pay $110 Australian, so what's that? That's like maybe 55 pounds for 20 litres. So I, I think that's not really bad. I always buy my oil in 20 litres. I never buy it in five. Um, I basically try and operate on the function of around about five to six dollars per litre 
and for me it works out to be a lot lot cheaper if I buy it in 20 litres so that's what I do I've always got a one litre uh, measuring flask in the actual shed and I know if I put six of them in I've got exactly six litres I'll then check the dipstick as you'll see later on and then from there I can gauge how much more I actually need to put into the motor to make sure it's at the optimum running um, level in the motor itself and before anyone says anything more yes that's what you do before you start the motor but once you start the motor you'll probably lose one litre or more of engine oil where does it go well it goes actually in the filter itself so you might fill it right up to the top, go for a drive, and then you'll come back and you'll go, oh, it's right at the bottom of the dipstick. Oh, it must have an oil leak. No, you don't. It's because the actual uh, oil pump has now pumped all that oil into the oil filter. So if the motor says, or actually more so, if you look in your workshop manual, you'll find there's actually two different measurements. That just sprung to mind there for me. You'll have one that measures the capacity of the motor for oil without the filter and then with the filter so that gives you a bit of an idea so that's what I use I've used 1540 in the past that works very effectively too particularly if you've got a engine that's recently rebuilt uh, that works really well um, you can use 1040 also in them um, however that would be something that I'd probably look at running in the Series 3 because I'm looking at getting a uh, completely rebuilt motor and actually putting it in that. So that's something uh, to keep in mind for that. So keep an eye on the actual age of the motor and how much work it's actually done. But anyway, let's chuck some oil in the motor and get it started. Rightio, so I've filled up the motor with oil. I've put in six litres. I've then started the engine. Um, or just you can start it or you can turn it over just with the uh, starter motor itself build up that oil pressure and then obviously double check your dipstick you'll need to put another litre of oil in and now the oil is right up at the tip top of the dipstick so it's all good to go um, now there's a couple other top tips in there too and the reason why I know these top tips is because I've made mistakes over the years and if you don't make mistakes then you don't learn so there's no shame in doing so when you start the engine make sure that you have a good look around underneath the engine bay of the vehicle why do I say this well the reason why I'm saying this is because I've had in the past where the actual uh, cartridge oil filter where you actually bolt it onto the motor, that O-ring, if that doesn't seal right, what happens? The oil comes out, doesn't it? And it goes everywhere. So the great thing about having a bit of gravel like this is that's a bonus because it keeps the dust down. So well worth the investment if you ask me. But if it's on your nice new concrete on your driveway, then you're gonna be ripping your hair out. So make sure that you put an oil pan underneath the actual oil filter housing when you first start up that motor. If you do that, then you're not going to get caught out. Because I've done it before and then I've gone, why is the oil pressure so low? Why isn't it working? And then I've gone, oh, what's that funny stuff on my feet? And I've looked down and there's six and a half litres of engine oil all over the driveway not not a good look not a good look particularly if you've got a rental if you're in a rental property anyway they don't need to know about that but anyway so that's that's the top tip i would recommend there so do that and most importantly take your time and have fun in doing so so anyway that's probably as far as i'm going to go today with this um the next step or the next video depending on how we go uh, we'll look at doing the actual points I'm going to show you a really simple way of doing your ignition timing too um, which you can do pretty much out in the bush and you don't need to buy any fancy stop lights timing lights any stuff like that so if you are on a bit of a budget then this is the next video is going to have some great tops top tips in there for you to be able to keep your landing running sweet but also save a little bit extra for that.
back pocket. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope this little video has been of use to you. And uh, look, if there's any questions that you've got in regards to servicing your series Land Rover, then feel free to put a question in the comments section down below. Damon and myself will do the best we can to answer your questions as quickly as possible. And if you are enjoying the content here at Seriously Series, then do please consider supporting us on Patreon. If that's not your cup of tea, you can support us via PayPal. And if you're new to the channel and you're enjoying the content, click on that subscribe button down below. Click on that notification button too. And that way you won't miss out on one single video. Anyway, thanks for watching and I hope to see you in our next video.